Newton's law of gravitation. The world and the gravitation of force. The force that binds together these progressively larger stru structures from star to galaxy to supercluster and maybe drawing them all towards the great attractor is the gravitational force. That force not only holds you on Earth, but also reaches out across intergalactic space. Newton's Law of Gravitation Every particle attracts any other particles with a gravitational force whose magnitude is given by F equal to G M1 M2 over R squared, where M1 and M2 are the masses of the particle, R is the distance between them, and G is the gravitational constant, whose value is now to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter square over kilogram square. We know Newton, F equal to ma equal to kilogram meter per second per second. The problem is in, we get this answer. Okay. These forces, F and minus F, form an action-reaction pair and an opposite interaction but equal in magnitude. They act on different stuff. It depends on the separation of the two particles, but not on their location. And F and minus F are not altered by the presence of other bodies, even if those bodies lie between the two particles we are considering. Acting force and reacting force. Apple and the Earth. The apple pulls up on the Earth just as hard as Earth pulls down on the apple. They are paired. You will F the same because the mass are different. So we calculate the acceleration. The G apple is 9.8 meter per second per second, but the Earth, the G Earth is 1.10 to the minus 25 meter per second per second. Huge difference. Although Newton's law of gravitation applies strictly to particles, we can also apply it to real objects as long as size of the objects are small compared to the distance between them. Cavendish balance. Cavendish. This device, known as a Cavendish balance, can be used to measure the universal gravitational constant. Inside the balance, two small lead spheres are attached to the end of a light bar suspended from a very fine wire. Two large lead spheres outside the balance can be rotated to either of two positions. This animation shows the balance from above. When the small spheres are in equilibrium, the gravitational forces between the large and small balls are balanced by the torsional force from the suspension wire. When the large spheres are moved to the opposite positions, the forces act in the same direction. The small spheres accelerate, turning an attached mirror and deflecting a laser beam. They oscillate back and forth, eventually reaching a new equilibrium position where the forces are once again balanced. The angle between the two equilibrium positions can be used to calculate the gravitational force between the spheres and thus the gravitational constant. We'll reverse the large spheres and watch a speeded up animation of the laser spot with a clock in the corner of the screen to keep track of the actual elapsed time. After one and a half hours, the spot has settled into a new equilibrium position 43 centimeters away from the first. Gravitation and the principle of superposition. Given a group of particles, we find the net or resort gravitational force 
exerted on any one of them by using the principle of superposition. This is a general principle that says a net effect is a sum of the individual effects. For n interacting particles, we can write the principle of superposition for gravitational forces as the force acting on particle 1 equal to F12 plus F13 plus F14 plus N plus F1N, where it's sigma F1I, I from 2 to N. Okay. Here, F1 is a net force on particle 1. And for example, F13 is a force acting on 1 from particle 3. What about the gravitational force on the particle M from a real extended object? In the limited case, we can divide the extended object into differential parts of mass dm, each of which produces only a differential force df on the particle. Then the above vector sign becomes an integral f total f equal integration. This is a vector integration. Here, integral is taken over the entire extended object. Newton solved the apple-earth problem by proving an important theorem called the shear theory. We will prove part of it okay, later. A uniform spherical shear of matter attracts a particle that is outside the shear, as if all the shear's mass were concentrated at its center. A uniform shear of matter exerts no net gravitational force on the particle located inside it. This is called shear theory. I will prove the first part for you in the later. Earth can be thought as a nest of such shears, one within another, and each attracting a particle outside Earth's surface, as if the mass of that shear were at the center of the shear. Thus, from the apple's point of view, Earth does behave like a particle located at the center of Earth and having a mass equal to that of the planet.